Tadeusz Kościuszko is uh, known first and foremost as a military leader, both in Poland and the other parts of the world. And he is uh, very well known indeed because he is uh, sometimes called a, a hero of two countries, that is Poland and United States, of course, because he was uh, active in the United States uh, during the, uh, the war against the Brits in the uh, from the uh, 1776 on uh, 1775 maybe on and to 1783 and he was active as a military engineer he have uh, invented the new types of um, he was very well educated in this, in this area in this field this, and he was uh, he invented the new uh, new types of fortresses. He was really, uh, really very productive in this uh, in this um, capacity. Uh, so uh, he is uh, known as the engineer. He is known as the um, political figure. He is known as the military hero, but he's not so uh, known as uh, the political thinker. Well, he was, of course, he was uh, an officer, so he was a man of action, not a man of words. But still, he had his uh, very strong beliefs about about society, how the society should function, how what should be the role of religion, what should be the role of education. And uh, Polish historians, uh, most of them are Catholics, and uh, or, or think about themselves as Catholics, because there are many Poles who identify themselves as Catholics, but they are not necessarily Catholics uh, in, in their real life. They are not, uh, the, those uh, ceremonies, uh, sermons and so on, they are not so important to them, uh, really. But still, uh, Polish historians usually, maybe because they are Catholics, or they are mainly Catholics, they usually tend to avoid discussing the um, uh, social po political views of Kościuszka. They usually concentrate uh, only or may almost only on his military efforts. So, <clears throat> but uh, of course Kościuszko was a man of his uh, era and his uh, political views would be, I think, very close to Diderot's uh, views. Not so much to Voltaire's views. When he, uh, he was uh, unable to find uh, some uh, job uh, in, in the Polish army because the Polish army was so small, the Russia, Prussia and Austria uh, made everything what was possible to prevent uh, uh, Poland uh, from uh, building a, a bigger army because they wanted to, um, they wanted to still to have some control over Polish uh, politics, both uh, internal politics and external politics. So <coughs> they bribed Polish uh, representatives in Sejm, in the Polish Parliament, to stop, um, uh, to stop building up new uh, regiments, stop creating new regiments, new uh, troops and so on. So there was, of course, the, the problems with, uh, with finding a job for a well-trained officer, Kościuszko was, even for a well-trained officer, when he was not backed up by some uh, very, very um, powerful family or something. But he was, to some degree, a favorite of, uh, of, Czartoris of Czartoryski family, but uh, somehow it didn't work in that way that he would really find a job in the Polish army. So it was just not enough uh, jobs. So he went to Dresden, to Saxony, and he, but he wasn't able to find a job there uh, either. So uh, then he went to France. And France in the 1770s, uh, in the mid-70s, was all about uh, the Americans, all about colonists, all about freedom, all about, all, all about this this uh, fighting for for freedom and against the uh, the Brits and this um, this co this conflict uh, between the colonists, the the English and and the British colonists and the um, Great Britain itself. Uh, so um, he just thought that maybe he would uh, find a job there, and he was uh, his. Uh, um, his uh, adventure was very 
different from, for instance, Lafayette's adventure, because Lafayette just went there to America in hope to find a job, to, in hope to be useful. Kościuszko was a, a, a very well-trained military engineer, and he was, uh, he was found by the Americans. He was wanted there, and he had all the papers and documents, and he was like crucial to the uh, American, um, to the American military effort. Uh, maybe not crucial, but very important indeed, because he was uh, an, an expert for uh, as far as fortresses and military engineering are concerned. So, um, but it, when uh, while still in France, he just uh, read what every uh, educated man would would read like uh, Voltaire's uh, works, like Diderot's works. There was some, uh, some difference between those two, because Voltaire was a, a typical representative of the first uh, generation of the French philosophers, and he was still very mistrustful, distrustful of, uh, of the populace, uh, were very distrustful of the common people. And he was very elitarian and, and so on, elitary. And uh, Diderot uh, was uh, rather um, more democratic, we would say, or, or, or however to, uh, to put it. He was more democratic, dem democratic and he was, uh, uh, he was a representative of the second generation of philosophers, those who, were, those who gave a very powerful response to uh, to this American example, and uh, the, uh, those who uh, he was a representative of those philosophers who were so much exp um, so much inspired by the American Revolution, as uh, as Diderot was, and of course Kościuszko was too, and that's why he went there and he saw the American society which was built. Uh, on an assumption that it's not your birth who should, who, which should, uh, the, the class in which you are, uh, in which you are born, is to decide your your future fate and a role in, in in the society, but your talents, your intelligence, and so on. And uh, for for most of the progressive progressives. Uh, in the Western world in those days, uh, the, the main example was either um, United States, so the democratic, uh, more democratic approach, or England, the more, more monarchical approach. But uh, the general idea was the same, that uh, it should be more talent, talents and intelligence that should determine your fate, your life. And uh, Kościuszko went uh, to America, and he uh, he saw this uh, he saw this uh, new republic, the new ideals. He saw them realized, and he, when he re when he saw them realized, that he would very easily well he would think that it would be he he thought that it would be great to implement some of them in in Poland. Of course, he was only a military leader, so he was unable to do it, but uh, until, of course, the insurrection, the so-called insurrection, so it's the, the, uh, the Kościuszko uprising of 1794. When he was the main leader of this, uh, of this uprising, he had the opportunity to try to, uh, to um, set up some some uh, American uh, uh, ideas to realize some of those ideas I on the Polish ground. But it, he wasn't an absolute uh, leader of uh, he wasn't the absolute leader of this uprising. So his uh, possibility of uh, changing something was limited. But still, he made the effort. See. He was very strongly against the feudal uh, service. He wanted to free the peasants, but he, he had his officers recruited mainly from nobility, so he knew that most of them wouldn't, uh, would never accept such a thing. So he abstained from this idea and he agreed that, okay, no changing of feudal service, although he, if he freed, if he would, uh, if he had 
had he freed all those peasants, they would probably would have supported him, and the uprising would had uh, be would be uh, would have been very uh, far uh, would have been far stronger in number and and so on. Uh, but he didn't do it because of of this um, uh, of this uh, opposition within his uh, ranks within his uh, his group of uh, officers. Uh, so he he also wanted to be very uh, utilitarian, very uh, practical about everything. So he like uh, he did what the most of the armies did in the 18th century. So he melted down the, the bells. The church bells and made the cannons, uh, the cannonballs from from it. But it was a usual procedure. But he wasn't really like asking for it. He was, he was like uh, demanding those. He, so he was wasn't uh, he wouldn't uh, take any excuse from the clergyman. He wasn't. Uh, he he never was uh, against openly against the cl uh, the clergy in Poland. But he was uh, against the um, religious in, uh, the religious intolerance, of course. He, he uh, accepted uh, people of uh, very different faith and confession uh, uh, to his army, and he, as as uh, far as he could, he he implemented all those uh, American democratic liberal ideas. Uh, he. He could uh, when, whenever he could, and wherever he could. So uh, he was of an opinion that uh, the education of uh, the uh, when when I when I uh, speak about uh, people of different faith accepting his army, uh, we could we should uh, we could uh, mention Berek Yoselevich. Berek Yoselevich was an officer. He was of uh, Jewish origin, and he. For Kościuszko, he was very uh, strongly for Kościuszko. He was very, uh, very huge adherent of Kościuszko, and he uh, even uh, uh, created the whole regiment, the whole Jewish regiment that fought on the side of of Kościuszko, in within the Kościuszko army. So it wasn't like just only talk and, and airy fairy ide ideas and no real action and realization. Those those ideas, whenever and wherever he could, were realized by Kościuszko. So Kościuszko had a very strong views about education or how the Polish people, how any people should be educated, and he was of an opinion that the best uh, best education is the national education the best uh, the best thing is to create the uh, create the um, the opinion in in the students in the pupils minds that uh, the nation is somehow connected and that we are all that we all share share some uh, interests and ideals and so on and he thought that dogmatic religion was um, a force working against it, and he was uh, he himself was an deist or atheist. We are not sure with, whether whether he was an atheist more or a deist. Maybe he wasn't so sure himself, but uh, but he wasn't so um, he wasn't so uh, I don't know. Uh, Productive uh, in in writing down uh, his uh, about his own uh, religious opinions, but he uh, definitely uh, in in uh, in politics in in, in social uh, as far as social conditions are concerned, he was uh, in favor of the nat so-called natural re religion, as many of the intellectuals and uh, the members of the intellectual elite in the 18th century were. Uh, the national religion it's, it would mean that of course there's some god or some some force ruling the world or maybe it isn't but so maybe we would accept that it is but surely it's not this petty god uh, who is like invented by the churches and so on so not this petty uh, man uh, over the cloud with the beard and and with all those dogmas of course not 
Um, Kościuszko was of an opinion that uh, Polish nation lacked what uh, many other nations had, like this sense of being of one nation, of one, uh, of, of sharing the common interests, and he blamed the religious intolerance that was so notorious in Polish uh, history in the 17th and 18th century for for this state of things that. Uh, that the Poles are thinking like uh, what class you are from, what 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 uh, po uh, what social class you are from, what uh, religion, what confession you represent, and not, not what nation you represent, and they are not thinking about the nation as the common interest. Um, so uh, we could uh, we could say that uh, Kościuszko was a nationalist today, but it was a, it wouldn't be also uh, true. He wouldn't uh, share this illusion that, uh, that that all those nations are so like superior and inferior to each other. He wasn't of an opinion, so he wasn't really a nationalist. He was like uh, more, more like a, a modern thinking uh, citizen who would think that uh, it's it's good for the people to feel that the, that uh, the country is our common good and our common. Uh, possession and we should all uh, try as hard as we can to protect it and to make it uh, as flourishing and as uh, well kept as we can.